Hi, I'm Dr. Yulia Pacheni. In this video, we will review how to place a pigtail catheter to treat a pneumothorax. First, let's talk about the indications of this procedure. There's a lack of consensus about which types of chest catheters or tubes to use in various situations. Pigtail catheters, such as this 14 French catheter, are increasingly being used for various situations. However, simple needle aspiration or conservative management where you have no procedure at all might be preferable. Other times, a large bore chest tube or thoracostomy tube might be needed. Traditionally, the main indication to place a chest pigtail catheter in our emergency department is a spontaneous pneumothorax without loculations or tension physiology. So what supplies do we need for this procedure? This is a sterile procedure, so you need a gown, a mask, a hair cover, and sterile gloves. For your sterile field, you need chlorhexidine preps, sterile towels, or a fenestrated drape. For numbing, you need lidocaine, as well as your needle and syringe. For the pigtail catheter itself, you need the catheter, the introducer needle, the guide wire, a scalpel, and a dilator. A three-way stopcock connects to the pigtail catheter followed by the adapter that connects to a Christmas tree type adapter, which is connected to our chest drainage system, typically set at minus 20 centimeters of water. There are two common sites to place a chest pigtail catheter. The anterior site is the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line, and the lateral site is typically described as the fourth or fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line, the same site as you would use for a traditional chest tube. Begin by positioning your patient and identifying anatomic landmarks. Raise the head of the bed so that your patient is semi-upright so that the pneumothorax accumulates behind the chest wall. When you pierce the chest wall with your introducer needle, you want to encounter air, not lung. This is the medial part of the clavicle and this is the lateral point. So right about here is gonna be our midclavicular line. There is a common tendency to air too medially, which gets you close to the mediastinal vessels. So make sure to find your actual midclavicular point. Next, find the sternal angle. This is where the second rib attaches to the sternum. And the space right underneath that is going to be your second intercostal space. An alternative approach is to find the fourth or fifth intercostal space, typically at the level of the nipple, at the anterior to mid axillary line. Let's create our sterile field. This is a sterile procedure. The operator dons a gown, a mask, a hair cover, and sterile gloves. Prep and drape your patient. Anesthetize the site with lidocaine. The epidermis and the pleura are the most sensitive areas, so that's where we want to target most of our anesthetic. The subcutaneous tissue in between is less sensitive. First, I'm using a small bore needle to raise a superficial skin wheel. Now, I change to a larger needle and I'm advancing it perpendicular to the skin with negative pressure in the syringe until I get air bubbles. This tells me my needle tip is now just inside the pleura. Back out slightly to get the needle tip just outside the pleura and inject additional lidocaine in this space. Okay, now make essentially the same puncture with the introducer needle. Again, you want to hug the superior border of the third rib and stay well clear of the inferior border of the second rib. The puncture should ideally be a straight shot through the chest wall without any redirection or walking up the rib. If you walk up the rib or have any re-angling of the needle, the wire is prone to following a curved path and a curved wire is prone to kinking when you go to dilate or thread a catheter. This has foiled many a pigtail catheter or central line. Here's the puncture. Once air can be aspirated, I know the needle tip is in the pleura. Advance slightly further just to make sure the needle will stay in the right place even if it moves around a tiny bit during the next step. Stabilize the needle and remove the syringe. Insert the guide wire and now remove the needle. Use a number 11 scalpel to cut a skin nick. It needs to be large enough to let the 14 French pigtail pass without difficulty. Next, we dilate. 
Thread your dilator over the guide wire and dilate the tract into the pleura. Now remove the dilator. Now we can thread the pigtail itself. This pigtail has been pre-straightened out by insertion of the plastic trocar. The catheter must be placed at least deep enough that all of the drainage holes are fully within the chest. Once the pigtail is in far enough, withdraw the guide wire and the inner trocar. Curl the pigtail tip by pulling tension on the suture until you feel resistance. Lock the suture by turning the mechanism with the plastic key. Now the pigtail is locked into a curled position. The remaining suture can now be cut off where it exits the hub. Other models of pigtails curl on their own without any locking mechanism or sutures, like this one here. Now we need to hook up our drainage system. We always add a three-way stopcock to our chest pigtails here, which will allow for flushing and reassessment of the catheter to ensure patency. On the thoracic surgery floor, nursing will flush once per shift. The adapter tubing goes on next, and this allows us to connect to our chest drain device. We initially set these to minus 20 centimeters of water. Other places might use just water seal or a Heimlich valve at this stage. Finally, we need to secure our catheter and apply an occlusive dressing. Apply Vaseline gauze around the insertion site to help make an airtight seal. Apply cover sponges and tape. Metaport tape works very well. Nice job, you placed your catheter. Now don't forget to check its placement on a chest x-ray. That concludes our video. Thanks for watching.